Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video we're going to be taking a look at another game cam. You know I love my game cams and this one is a Hikamic 12 megapixel low glow cam. Now this one is currently on Amazon at approximately 53 English pounds, which isn't very expensive. So can we expect much of this? Well, it's 12 megapixels. However, it's IP66, which means that it's very weatherproof. It's not just IP56 weatherproof, it's very weatherproof. You could pretty much bury this one in the ground um, and it would be a long time before the water got into it. It's certainly going to withstand anything that Mother Nature throws at it. Trigger speed is 0.5 seconds, which is very good for a cheap camera. Some of them are only 0.8, some are even 1 second. A 1 second trigger speed isn't much good because you can get little things like mice scurrying in and out, you can get foxes traveling past, you can get birds landing on a perch and then quickly flying away. Trigger speed of a second is going to miss it. Trigger speed of 0.5 seconds is probably going to pick it up. The batteries that I used in here were Duracell Extra Power. They lasted very, very well and this took approximately 900 to 1000 pieces of video and pictures. And this fellow was tested in all conditions. It's the winter now, so it's pretty much the best time to test the game cam, although there's not as much wildlife about. It's a good time to test its weatherproof capabilities. These short little clips that I'm gonna show you in a minute are pretty much the highlights of the test period. Like most game cams, you've got to have them set a hell of a long time to get to get a collection of good footage. Now testing one of these properly doesn't really please many of the companies. This company's been fine. A few of the previous ones, <sighs> literally two days after the thing's been delivered, it's like, when's, it, when's the review, when's the review, when's the review, when's the review? I'm like, you need to set it, you need to test it properly. So this has been tested properly, as I say, in all conditions in our winter. And the little snippets of footage that I got are the highlights of the test period. Now let's have a close-up look at the features of this cam and then I'll show you the footage that it took. You be the judge of whether you think that's good or not. I think we'll start on the back of this one. And on the back we've got, I don't know what you would call it, possibly a, a tree brace or something. It just helps it to sit snug on an average size sort of a tree trunk. And through there you would feed your strap. That can be taken off, but if it's taken off, you've got nowhere else to put your strap. On the front, you've got your LEDs, you've got your light sensor, flash, camera, and detector. Just a close-up of the clasps there. They work fine, but they are very small. And in here, we've got a place for eight AA batteries, which has got a cover on to stop them dropping out. We've got on, set up, off here. Don't need that at the moment. We've got a USB in slot, and we've also got a slot for a memory card. Full size SD card. Okay, so let's take a close look when it's switched on. I've got from off to set up. That'll give us access to the menu. Okay, as soon as that black screen comes on. Press the menu button and in there we've got all our various settings. First up we've got mode where you can set it to take pictures or video or pictures and video. Photo size you can pick anything up to 12 megapixels so I've got it set on the highest setting. Video size anything up to full HD. I'll just quickly show you you can set it there. There you go four different settings. I always have it full HD. Picture number, that allows you to take one picture, two pictures, or three pictures. Strangely, when you've got it in hybrid mode, which is picture and video, you can only take one photo. Not quite sure why that is. It doesn't really matter though. Now the video length, you can set that from one second, <laughs> which is a pretty pointless video length, right up to 10 minutes. Next up, we've got interval, which is basically a delay between how long it takes this to be triggered. So it would trigger once, it'd take a picture and a video, and then there'd be a 10 second delay before it was able to be triggered again. That again is adjustable. 
Most people will try and set the interval way down low, but it's not good unless you're in an area where there's not much going to be flying past or not many leaves dropping, not much activity. If you have it set on 10 seconds, that'll cover you for reasonably high activity areas. And it also means that your camera won't be firing off all the time and eating up the space on your memory card. Timestamp, that is to stamp on the pictures. I don't have that on. Time switch, on or off, I just, you know, I've never even looked at that. I've had that off, I don't know what that is. I should really look that up. It can't be important. Password set, that allows you to set a password on here. So if it gets stolen, nobody will be able to use it. Serial number set, that just uh, gives you information about the camera. Time lapse, what that does, it just takes pictures at random intervals, or sorry, intervals that you set. So it's useful if you want to track, say, the progression of clouds across the sky or something, or the, the sun coming up in the morning and put all that into a good video. Power saving mode, you can switch that on or off. I always have it on. That saves the batteries. Language, obviously it's set in English because I am English. Format, that is to format the memory card. You can set the clock, and that's really only useful if you timestamp on your pictures. I don't timestamp the pictures, so I don't bother with that. Default set, that sets everything back to the default settings, if you want to. Auto power off. I've got it set at five minutes. Again, that just saves battery life. It is adjustable. Volume record. Yep, I always have the volume on. Volume play. That means when you're playing back what you've recorded on here, that it would play out. These are just settings that you probably would never need to get into. System, you'd never need to get into that. And then we're back to the beginning. Quite a lot of features in a very cheap camera. Now this one has only got 24 infrared LEDs. A lot of the other ones have got 42. 24 LEDs, I was thinking wouldn't illuminate as much as it did, but it still did a decent job. The one difference that this one has between previous ones is, this one has got a little sensor here that you can see. I think that is the light chip, and it seems to be very sensitive. That improved light sensor does allow this camera to take colour video footage in much darker conditions than all of my other game cams. The footage comes out a little bit grainy, but it is in colour. Overall construction of the camera is very good. The cost of it, just short of 53 English pounds, is very cheap for a game cam, but it does a good job. I do prefer the ones with the moulded slots at the back where you can pass the strap through them. That's a minor niggle though. So the footage is good, picture quality is also good, price is excellent. If you're looking to buy your first game camera or you're just looking to add to your collection of game cams, it's definitely worth considering. If you found this video review useful, please hit the thumbs up button. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.